I uh, would like to say it's, uh, it's good to be here, good to see you. Uh, I got a uh, text uh, early yesterday morning. Uh, a very good friend of mine, a uh, fellow I went to uh, school with uh, down at St. Paul. Uh, he's an air traffic controller. He had an aneurysm. And uh, some of the brothers were trying to get together and uh, try to go see him. Uh, I think he had surgery uh, yesterday. And of course, that's a very serious thing. And, uh, you know, these past few years, I think all of us have, uh, at one time or another, I, I know in my own life, I'll, I'll just stick with that, I've thought more and more and more about my own mortality. And, uh, you know, you, You begin to reflect and you realize sometimes some of the, the, the things that you disagreed about or the things that uh, upset you, uh, they, they, they tend to pale when you get, you know, news like that. Uh, he has a family and... Uh, You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, relationships and in, in cultivating a relationship, sometimes uh, friends, uh, we, uh, we make promises to one another uh, or we, uh, we agree to do certain things. And at the time, you're, it's not that you're not thinking that, because you do, you realize anything can happen to anybody at any time. But when you're, when hearts are knitted together, and when, uh, again, real friends, uh, Saints, it's so important that we have quality people in our lives. It, 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 it really is. And again, I'm saying nothing against uh, surface-type relationships. I'm, I'm, I'm not, there's, like where you work, there may be someone you're particularly friendly with, uh, and, and that's okay. You might even, you know, go to lunch together or whatever, take break together. And the relationship is good while you're both employed at the same place. I'm not, I'm not talking about that type of relationship. I'm talking about relationships that are forged uh, that may have been forged in your youth. It is not to say that these type of relationships can't be formulated now, but uh, in your youth, uh, a lot of times, you, you, you know, you may not be married, you may not have children uh, at that time. And You know, we, we, we ask things of people that we, we feel uh, particularly close to. And uh, like I said, you know, a lot of times you'll, uh, you'll agree to do something or you'll agree to, uh, as best you can, 
be there. But life, uh, life kind of sometimes will throw you a curve, and you may not be quite ready. <laughs> In other words, life doesn't wait until you're ready to do the thing that you said. Life is going to keep marching, and it, it cautions all of us to be careful what you promise, particularly if you have every intention of being a man or woman of your word. I'm not saying don't promise. I'm saying count the calls before you promise. Uh, a lot of times we uh, have situations and they're very, they're ultra emotional. And, and sometimes in an emotional state, we might agree to do something. You, you know, I, I, I kept saying uh, last quarter of 2023, I kept saying, you know, man, you know, things are going to happen and people are going to need you. Remember I kept telling us that? Um, it's real, folks. You know, we, we, it's good that we study, it's good that we can, you know, quote scripture, and it's even better when we're living out the scripture that we understand, the Torah. See, and in all of that, that helps to prepare every one of us for situations that we either made a pledge or we made a promise, even though we didn't know when or if it would be called into play. See, real friendships are when you uh, it's more to it than just going to a ball game together or going shopping together things of that nature, and nothing's wrong with any of those things. But when, uh, <clears throat> we all will be given an opportunity Maybe not, hopefully not this year, but we all will be given an opportunity to help someone. And uh, it's vitally important that uh, we remember the promises that we made. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that, and I'll get into uh, the lesson today. Oh, and uh, on Wednesdays, I was glad that uh, Bernita mentioned uh, that. Uh, I, 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 uh, I got a text, and I, I thought this was a, a really good uh, title, what we go call Wednesday. I mean, I know most of us look at it as Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, it'll be Wednesday night forum. Wednesday night forum. And uh, it'll give us as uh, a chance as believers in church, people, church goers, uh, a chance to, uh, yes, discuss scripture, but also discuss 
uh, life events um, uh, where we can uh, volley back and forth. Uh, uh, some like to say midrash, you know, the scholars. Uh, and uh, it'll give us a chance to get to know each other. Because see, in a setting like this, we know each other's faces. We, you know, and that's good, but uh, Wednesday nights will give us an opportunity to hear from different people. Uh, it'll also give us an opportunity to kind of try to get to know one another a little better in a more uh, <laughs> natural and earthy uh, way. Because yes, we're spirit, but we're part earth too. Uh, when he formed Adam, he fashioned them. Uh, out of the dust. And he said what? From dust you came and from dust we'll return. That's part of the earth. Today I want to go to James. Uh, And it says, follows, I'm starting in verse 2, epistle of James. It says, and I'll read it out of the King James and then give another. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Let me read that again. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Another translation. Regard it all joy, regard it all as joy, my brothers, when you face various kinds of temptations, for you know that the testing of your trust produces perseverance. Last night we had a really good uh, session with some of the brothers that were here. And, uh, oh boy. Mm. And I shared a quote and one of the young fellows uh, said how it really, really blessed him. Uh, and I got a chance to talk with him a little bit out in the parking lot. And he, it encouraged me listening to him because I, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Church is not just for ladies and old men. You know, it, it, it isn't. You know, a lot of the younger guys kind of think, you know, that's what it's for. But I really got encouraged uh, because this, this young man, he's, he's working on some things. And uh, he uh, made me feel a little better about, uh, about our situation. About, about, about EWC's situation, just, just talking with them. And uh, we, uh, we agreed to meet, because I, I, I really would like to get more in depth in, into what he's doing to see how 
maybe I can help him. I don't know. And maybe he can help us. We don't know. We won't know until we sit down and break bread. But I, I uh, it gave me a joke. I was like, my, I, that's, it's what I needed. It says, the testing of your trust. See, part of the Wednesday forum, we need to build trust. <laughs> we need, I'm not saying we don't trust one another, but we need, a, we need an infusion of trust throughout the body. And, uh, I'm going to try to stay still. I forgot. Somebody said I get behind that pole and they can't even see me. I'm sorry. Again, it says, for you know that the testing of your trust produces perseverance. Because uh, after I read that, the, the statement, he was talking about how he had, uh, he had had some trials and some, some tribulations, but he was coming through on the other side. And I told him uh, out in the park, I said, well, you know, man, you know, as a young man, you, and not that he was. I said, you can't give up. See, perseverance will make a man keep coming, even if he gets knocked down. And see, all of us, in one way or another, have gotten knocked down. Maybe you didn't get the promotion. Maybe you didn't get the job, you know. But, you, you know, you got up and you dust yourself off and you kept, kept coming. And uh, his trust was in the most high for what he was doing. And, and I, was, I was surprised that uh, there was so much opposition by him trying to uh, really just run his business. I've, I've you know, dipped my toe in the business thing here in, in this city, and, and I know some of the things that he came up against, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I eventually, I kept going, kept going, and eventually I, I got done what I needed to get done, and uh, we did it for about five years, and finally I had to do something else, but if you don't give up, you keep coming, uh, you'll usually arrive at a point where the hard work and the perseverance and the trusting in the fact that what I'm trying to do is right, it can help people. If you don't give up, it'll come to pass. And he's at a point where this thing's about to, to take off. And, uh, I, I just think it's wonderful. I just think it's wonderful, and I, I pray that this area will be ready for it, and even if they don't understand it, that they won't be a, a roadblock. Because sometimes when you have something that's good, if people don't understand it, they can be in opposition to it and, and really don't have a reason why. Regard it as all joy, my brothers, when you face various kinds of temptations, for you know that the testing of your trust produces perseverance. But let perseverance do its complete work so that you may complete and hold lacking in nothing, so that you may be complete and whole. Complete and whole. And I've said in times past, we are all complete. 
I know some of us have probably been to seminars and they have said if you're not married, you're, you're not complete. You are complete, married or not. We all are. We're complete. And whole. Complete and whole. Now, that, uh, that, little, uh, that little knowing that we have, where we, it's, it's, something's just not quite, that's, that's a longing that only the most high can fulfill. You know, because sometimes you look around and, you know, things are good and things are uh, all of that, but it's just, it's just something. You know, you, you had a good meal, and you even maybe had dessert. I mean, some of you won't because desserts represent sugar, and I know a lot of you are trying to do real good about sugar, and I, I salute you. So I'll use myself again. If I had a good meal and I had dessert, and I'm, 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 I'm happy, I'm satisfied, but about a, 20 minutes later, I just want a little something else, and I don't know exactly what it is. And I'm saying that because sometimes in life, you know, you sit down and uh, you, maybe you had a good week uh, at work and uh, Things went well, and you sit there and, you know, maybe both of your cars running good and all of that, and you get along with your neighbors, and uh, they don't irritate you too much at whatever house of worship you go to. <laughs> but it's something, you're still longing for something, and that something's him. More of an infusion of him. And only he's going to satisfy that thing. I mean, I, you know, I might, if I got a peppermint patty in the house, that might just top it off, but I won't quite do it like he can. but let perseverance do the complete work so that you may be complete and whole, lacking in nothing. Lacking in nothing. Lacking in nothing. And then it says, now, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. And they, they have God, I like to say, and let him, let him ask y'all, who gives to all generously and without reproach. Now, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask y'all, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. In 2024, we need a big dose of wisdom. We, we, we really do, because I, saints, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, people need your help. People need your help. And the people that need your help don't need my help. They need your help. There are situations that he has tapped you. He, he, no need to ask him, well, why is this coming to me? Because he's, he's the one, he's serving it up. And he's serving it up to you. Your pastor might can't handle that. That might be for you to do. Now, am I saying that you and only you? No. No. Because some things may call for several of us to get together to see if we can't help you in that situation to help someone else. 
I think that movie, Jerry Maguire, there was a scene where Cuba Gooding Jr.'s uh, character, he was playing a wide receiver, and Tom Cruise was the agent. And uh, Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character was saying to Tom Cruise, help me help you. Help me help you. And that's kind of what the Most High is saying to us, particularly in this year. He wants us to help him help others. But he want to use us. He wants to use us. Now, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask Yah, who gives to all generously and without reproach. Without reproach. Fear. Sometimes we're a little... Uh, taken aback, approaching the most high. And I, you know, I know we all know about coming boldly before the throne of grace. And I know that's, that's what, how it was translated out. But a lot of times we are fearful to approach him to even ask for wisdom because of maybe what we have been doing or not doing. But he says, if anybody want wisdom, ask me for it. And I'll give it to you without reproach. Because what he wants, or what it appears that he wants, is for us to realize that when your heart really is to help someone else, he'll give you the strength, he'll give you the wisdom, he'll increase the desire for you to bring that thing to pass. And guess what, saints? We'll get something good in the process. Now, I'm not saying we're giving to get. Because sometimes in life, your situation may be, if I just use for example, if, uh, <laughs> if, I, if I owe Greg $100, And uh, I got twenty dollars, but I owe him a hundred dollars. And uh, <laughs> James need ten dollars. This is a Wednesday night type scenario, but I'm gonna do that this morning. Do this this morning. James need ten dollars. I got twenty. I owe Greg a hundred. And James is really in need. I need to go to Greg and tell him I don't have his, 
$100. And I'll probably be embarrassed. And Lord knows, I sure hope he didn't get that $100 from his wife and give it to me. But hopefully, he has enough trust in our relationship, because he had to trust me to some degree, or he wouldn't have gave me the 100 bucks. So there is a level of trust there. Now, I don't have but $20. I owe Greg 100 James is in a situation, but he don't need but $10. Well, I, I think if I'm using wisdom, the thing I need to do, I need to get with Greg, see if I can get some time. I guess some people would say, well, Barry, the, the least you could do is offer him the, the other 10. But you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going somewhere with this. You know, when, um, when it comes to money that we borrowed from one another, borrow from one another, usually, if we're all being honest, if they wrote you a check, they might accept the check. If they gave you cash, they won't cash back. Again, I'm not going to speak for you. I'm going to speak for myself. The way I gave it to you is the way I'd like it back. Now, I know sometimes situations can occur. And sometimes, for a lot of us, if we can just pay them back, we are happy. And I know, and that's good. And we need to do that because that builds more trust because then you might trust somebody else. I ain't forgot this scenario. But in using wisdom, I can't, I can't rectify the situation that I put myself in with Greg. But I have an opportunity to get some of this heat off of James. And I ain't talking about the James in the Bible. I'm talking about the James sitting there by his wife. <laughs> and I purposely brought up that scenario because, see, this sort of thing happens in churches all over everywhere. Folks have left churches because they borrowed money from a member was either slow or never did pay them back, the person that borrowed the money got upset because the person they borrowed the money from finally, because usually people don't want to have to come to you. They want you to be a person of your word. If you said you were going to do this, then do it. But life happens, things happen, unexpected. Understand all of that. But again, you don't want to violate the trust that's been placed in you. That's uh, uh, one thing I, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I, we all, we, we miss, uh, we, we miss all the saints, but. There was a saint, I, I, I mean, if, if, that, that, that sister, she purposed to do right. <laughs> but one time I, I just, I, I stopped and I said, listen, I'm not worried about that. I know you will when you get it. I said, please. 
Let's them talk about that. But see, it was so important to them that they just wanted things to be right, which, you know, I can appreciate. But I, you know, I, I had to convey to them that, hey, the level of trust is there. Things happen. Folks got kids, they got grandkids, some got great grandkids. And, and we know in their young lives, there's a lot of unpredictability. Stuff's always happening. Something for school, something for this, something for that. But getting back to that thing, it would, it would be, see, some of us would say, well, you know, um, some people would say, well, you know, I can't pay Greg. Now James won't, I ain't got but $20, and now James need 10 And he asked me, could I help him? The wise thing is, I got a $100 bill on me, not a $100 BIL. I have a debt of $100. That I'm indebted to. Greed. Why wouldn't I want to help James? Let somebody house have some peace. Ain't no need of me being miserable and him being miserable too, and Greg being miserable. Because now he got to go back home and say, Vern, I ain't got you $100 yet. Vern, he ain't paid me back. I hope he don't tell her it was me that he lent him. <laughs> <laughs> Let her know. Saints, the reason I picked that scenario is because in this year, we're going to be better stewards. We're going to track, even if you don't use that little flimsy book I gave you, we're going to track our disposables because why? We got a first fruits feast day coming up. And I know when we talked about this a little bit, we know last, uh, you know, in yesteryear, they gave uh, the first fruits of their crops. He was trying to help me. First fruits of crops. Well, we're going to give the first fruits of our substance. But in that scenario, the proper thing for me to do was make it right with Greg, but alleviate my brother's situation. Because I can. He said, listen, he said, when you, and I'm paraphrasing, when you embark upon a situation and you have the power to do good, then he just said, do it. That's what Nike got, that slogan. They say, just do it. But y'all said, do it. He didn't say, uh, well, do I really like James that much? Or well, I, I kind of, I really don't kind of know him. I mean, he come to Bible study and we, we do this and we do that. But I don't really know that brother. Is he going, is he going to give me my $10 back? Now, Greg just lent me $100. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry this brother through all of that and he only asked me for 10 Why am I talking about this? Because I'm telling you, saints, this kind of scenario happens all over the church world. We don't do well in those type of scenarios, and we, we've got to improve. All the, we got this thing, all things common, funding. And again, I'm not trying to make this a political thing, but we're trying to put things in such a way that 
when a member has a small emergency, and small for some people, small for some people could be a hundred dollars. Small could be ten dollars. Small could be more. I know they got payday loans and things like that. Saints, stay out of those. Uh, and I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not getting into politics and all of that. We got enough of that coming down the pipe. But I know that the news that we're hearing, we're hearing that the economy's great. But you've heard me ask in times past, okay, the economy may be great, but how is your economy? The unemployment rate is like three point something. We see hiring signs all over the place. I'm not going to call no names because I'm not, again, trying to get flagged or whatever, but a, a large trucking outfit a month or so ago was uh, bragging because they reached a deal with the union and they, their, their drivers are going to be making a lot of money. Well, just a couple of days ago, I think it's either 1,200 lost their jobs. In California, uh, fast food workers now at least make $20 an hour, and that's wonderful. But you need probably $30 an hour to live in Los Angeles anyway. And what I'm trying to show you folks is what's happening is, yes, raises are being given, but then layoffs occur. And so one month you're going home, hey, honey, I got a raise. And if both of them, and, and I think about the young people, oh, my goodness. And I'm talking about. I don't even, I don't know how to, the Gen Z and all of that. Um, the people between 19 and 29, uh, man, it's tough. I was watching some information on this uh, gig economy. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, this Wednesday. But uh, <laughs> it's becoming more and more difficult for young people to make it. I'm not saying they can't. One, things are so tight. Now the young people, they don't want to get married. And if they don't get married, they're going to stop having kids. And who going to pay for my retirement? I, you know, I, I know you say, Barry, you're so selfish. And, and I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm joking, but I'm not. I'm not. See, the way capitalism works, somebody's always got to be paying into the system. Somebody's always got to be paying into the system. And I know people say, well, what does all this have to do with trust? Everything. Because this year, because I said that I was going to try to live with you this year, but I also said it's none of my business what you write in your book. That's between you and the one that made you. But I am trying to encourage you, please, watch your discretionary spending. I also have another topic that I want to go over, but that'll be for Wednesday night. But saints, have you noticed everything now is becoming subscription-based? And, and that's, that's the new economy. 
That's the new economy. It's almost like we'll never really own anything ourselves. And really, we kind of don't. You know how? Because all of us, I don't care if you own a home, four cars, you pay in personal property tax, and you will pay that until you come into my funeral. I will, whatever I own, I'll pay personal property tax till I'm not here anymore. I have a business that I work out of my home. I got paperwork from Chesterfield County. I have to list all the equipment and everything that I got. I got to pay taxes on that as well. And you do too if you got a business. You definitely do if you got a car. You definitely do if you got a motorcycle. I'm not saying subscription is evil or anything. I'm just saying this is where we're being carried. And we didn't, you know, uh, the young man was uh, given uh, information about how it started. See, we, uh, you know, most of us are thinking what well, subscription is new, but this this subscription type thing, it started back in, anybody remember BMG music sales where you could get CDs and movies and things like that? Well, I, I used to get a lot of my CDs. You know, you, you join the club and they send you a magazine and you get to pick your favorite artist and you fill it out and, you, and they was coded and you would code it mail it in and then they would mail it out to you. And to be a member, you kept ordering music. It's, this, it's almost the same thing with um, in, all, in the cars, in the new cars. I don't know if they still do, they do the OnStar thing. Well, that's a subscription. Um, uh, uh, XM, Sirius XM, I had that in my truck. Uh, I guess I still got it, but I, I mean, I, I'm not subscribing to it, so I, I, I can't pull it up. I mean, I can pull it up, but it only plays commercials. So I, I you know, I get on out of that. And, 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 and I'm saying, There's a new concept, and I'm going to get back to this. I don't have but nine minutes. There's a new concept that goes along with the subscription thing. Companies now are looking at lifetime value. That's why they, they not only want you to buy the product, but, you know, our cell phones. Now, not all of us. I, I, the cell phones that I have, although y'all beat up on Motorola. Oh, I didn't mean to call the name. I, you know, I still buy uh, the cell phone. But, you know, they, they got us on this. They got, you know, and, and now I don't know if they're going to improve, but most of our phones last pretty good for about two years, maybe year three, you might start having a little trouble. I know the kind I got, if I get three years, I'm doing good. But everything is, is, is wanting you to subscribe. In fact, even on the, um, the, the content creators, uh, they all will say, uh, do me a favor, um, hit the like button, and subscribe because I think YouTube pays them off of, I guess, the, the likes. Well, there's, there's one gentleman that I, I listen to a lot. He has some really good, smart people come on, and he always says, um, according to my data, 69% of you 
view my, I guess his podcast, but 69% uh, view it, but they don't subscribe. That's me. You know, I guess I, I should subscribe. Because the brother, have, he have some good content uh, on there. And he says, do me a favor. He says, please subscribe because I guess the algorithms or whatever reward them some kind of way. And I don't, uh, you know, I, I guess I could hit the subscribe. But see, I don't subscribe to anybody. I just rip them off for their knowledge. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Trust and perseverance. Trust and perseverance. 2024, the year of trust. We are in uh, our history month. Well, this month, we're going to not only review some history, we're going to double down on figuring out how we can trust one another better, and we're going to continue to persevere so that by the time first fruits roll around, we'll be setting all right. We need an infusion of trust. We need an infusion of wisdom. And we need to keep moving forward. God bless you.